So guys, in this next news story, the dismembered remains of a missing millionaire crypto influencer have been found stuffed inside a suitcase in Argentina just weeks after his disturbing last post described evil people who wanted to destroy him. Cleanly chopped up body parts of Fernando Perez Algaba, who's 41 years old, were found in an abandoned red suitcase by two children who were playing football in a stream in Buenos Aires on July the 23rd. Algaba's body, which had sustained two bullet wounds, was found days after he was reported missing on July the 19th. At the scene, investigators reportedly found the victim's legs and a forearm in the suitcase before finding a complete arm in the stream. A torso was then spotted and his head was found inside a backpack. The body parts were cleanly amputated, suggesting that the mutilation could have been carried out by a professional hitman. A four-letter tattoo on the hand confirmed that the remains belonged to Algaba with fingerprint analysis later providing further confirmation. According to the autopsy, Algaba, who was nicknamed the Lettuce and is claimed to have been in severe debt, was killed with two shots that entered his back area, according to an Argentinian media outlet. The murder investigation has been launched and one suspect has reportedly been arrested. According to local media, Algaba had sent and received more than 2,000 audio and text messages of a hostile nature. Algaba had reportedly been threatened by a man who was demanding the return of a debt close to £70,000 and claimed Algaba was poisonous and had betrayed him. The messenger says, I'm not going to kill you. I'm going to do something worse to you. I'm going to gouge out your eyes and cut you up so that you can't have any more money in your life. Further messages referred to two other men whom Algaba allegedly owed money and Algaba also racked up a number of debts with the tax agencies over in Argentina when one of his companies was struggling financially. The businessman left a note on his phone admitting that he had lost a significant amount of money after investing in crypto. Algaba, he had nearly a million followers on Instagram and he flaunted his luxury lifestyle of high-end cars, jet skis, exclusive parties, holidays, you name it. But before his death, he had made a series of disturbing posts on social media. One of them showed the businessman in a car with a company in audio saying it's incredible how there are such evil people in the world that while you're thinking of helping them, they're thinking of destroying you. In another clip, he was asking his mum, please, I need your help to clear my head. And from here, I'm realising two things that we can't escape from these problems, mum, and that problems will always follow us. It's unclear when the murder took place, but a spokesperson has told the authorities that she had arranged to meet with Algaba on July the 19th to hand back the keys to the apartment he rented to her, but he had failed to show up. He was described himself as an investor who also sold and rented luxury vehicles. But Algaba reportedly found himself under financial and legal pressures with one of his companies failing to even have a tax identification number whilst another was reported for fraud and a third company had debts. His creditors had also been pursuing him, opening lawsuits against him following bounced checks. According to local media, Algaba has a rags to riches backstory as a kid he used to sell sandwiches and deliver pizzas on the streets in his home time before he started to get into vehicle repairs and he saved up his money and he made his fortune later on investing in cryptocurrencies and the stock market and by the time he was 24 years old it's believed that he had a warehouse full of supercars. So guys, this is a new story coming in. Sometimes all may not seem if you're watching on social media, people living this lavish lifestyle, you just don't know what's behind it. As I always say, whatever you've got, stay humble. And in this next news story, a prolifically violent Sheffield man who caused injury at each interval of his arrest and imprisonment has been jailed. Callum Woodburn is 24, robbed a taxi driver at knife point, assaulted a police officer following his arrest and assaulted an inmate whilst on remand at HMP Doncaster and he appeared before Sheffield Crown Court. On the 3rd of January 2022, Woodburn got a taxi on Harborough Avenue in Sheffield. The taxi driver told Woodburn around 
several locations before travelling back to Harbour Avenue. When close by, Woodburn told the driver to stop at Manor Park Centre and as he did, he pulled a knife out and threatened him saying, do you want to go back and see your kids? Woodburn then grabbed the driver's takings bag and fled the scene. Officers attended and arrested Woodburn in a property on Harbour Avenue. While in police custody, Woodburn showed further aggressive nature and assaulted a police officer headbutting and causing injury to the officer's face. Following charge by the CPS, Woodburn was remanded onto HMP Doncaster and while on remand, Woodburn once more showed his violent nature and attacked an inmate. On the 9th of March, an inmate approached the servery where Woodburn was stood. Woodburn pulled a bladed article consisting of a plastic razor blade handle wrapped in blue fabric and two razor blades sticking out of it and assaulted the victim, causing deep lacerations to his neck, arm and knee. The victim requires stitches and has been left with scarring. Woodburn was sentenced on the 20th of July to a combined sentence of 12 years. Charlotte Reed from the Doncaster Prison crime team who investigated the assault at HMP Doncaster said, Woodburn has showed his aggressive nature at every opportunity and I am pleased the sentence reflects the severity of his actions that myself and colleagues from across the force have had to investigate. Through Woodburn's actions he has showed no remorse or compassion for those he has injured. Our role within the prison crime team is to ensure that everyone within the prison, including staff and inmates, are safe detecting the investigation, corruption, drug supply and violence of all which will not be tolerated. Inmates have a right to serve their sentence without fear and violence. And in another news story coming from London Ways, three men have been jailed for running a drug network in central London. On April the 12th, 2021, police raided a house in Westminster that was believed to be used as a drug stash house. The three suspects, Said Gutali, who's 25, Lloyd Brown, who's 25, and Max Daniels, who's 19, ran out of the back of the house when they heard the officers entering. They were caught and detained in the rear alley of the address. Over £35,000 worth of cocaine and heroin were found alongside a self-loading pistol ammunition. Phones which were found which corroborated their involvement in running the drug line. A fourth suspect was located at his home address later that same day and he'd been acting as a drugs runner who was 17 years old. Extensive phone communication inquiries concluded that Brown was the line holder of the Adam line and Gutali and Daniels were the holders of the TT line. Analysis of the two drugs lines showed that between January and April, Adam line had supplied over one kilo of crack and heroin which was worth over £9,000 a week. The TT line had supplied over two kilos of crack cocaine and heroin. Gutali was jailed for six years, Daniels was jailed for five years, and Brown was jailed for six years. Police Constable Jack Hardwick from the Operation Orochi team said, We have taken down two more lines running in and out of London. Our communities suffer as a result of the violence and antisocial behaviour they face in their neighbourhoods because of this criminality. The recovery of a working firearm with suitable ammunition highlights the association between drug supply, even county drug lines supplying outside of London and violence and firearm offences on the streets of London. The Met will relentlessly pursue those responsible for county lines drug supply, bringing them to justice for their abhorrent crimes. So guys, these are a number of stories coming out from the streets of the UK. It's your boy GC. Keep it locked, keep it real.